I'm basically not capable of functioning in society. I like to laugh. I like to meet people. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Uh, this is Tim Heidecker. Welcome to Office Hours Live. It is April 11th, Thursday, 10 a.m. here on the Pacific Coast, uh, Pacific Time Zone, I should say. Um, weather outside is quite nice. Um, sunshine, a little breezy, a little chilly. Uh, I, sorry, I'm starting the show a little low energy. We just received some heartbreaking news. Um, I'm not sure. I guess you guys are aware, but... Um, yesterday, I believe Wednesday, 2024, April 10th, that would be, uh, we, the world lost, um, O.J. Simpson, a, uh, celebrated actor from the Naked Gun films, from the Zucker Brothers, and, uh, football legend, I mean, one of the great football players of all time, Heisman Trophy winner. And we just wanted to take a minute and remember him and talk about our memories of watching O.J. play on the, the gridiron when we were just kids and seeing him in those great Hertz rental commercials that were so popular. And then, of course, as um, uh, Norberg, the uh, partner to Frank Drebin from the police academy, I mean the... Uh, I apologize for that. Naked the, Gun. Naked, naked gun. gun. Thank you, Matt. And Naked Gun, two and a half. <laughs> so this news came by my uh, radar this morning as I was looking at the news. It says, New York Times reports O.J. Simpson athlete whose trial, uh, he ran, let's see here, I'm sorry. O.J. Simpson who ran, to f who ran to fame on the football field made fortunes as a black All-American in movies, advertising, and television, and was acquitted of... Killing his former wife and friend in 1995. What? What the hell is that about? What? What's the big when? deal? He's acquitted. Huh. I don't know about that. So <laughs> we do apparently, I guess what happened? He killed his, well, he doesn't say he killed, he said he was accused of, I guess. And there was yeah. a big murder trial. Was a big Back in the 90s. Hiya, Tim, you can't be digging up these old tweets or whatever you're looking at. And I'm saying at the New York Times here, they said that uh, the jury in the murder trial mur I cleared him. Oh, that's wow. good. Damn. The case, was acquitted. Jeffrey but there's a but there's a but. But the case which had helped, which has held up a cracked mirror to black and white America, ruined his world. Oh, that's too bad. I didn't. True. It's a shame. <laughs> Oh, damn it. I didn't know he had that kind of baggage. Well, we still remember the, the great OJ. We actually got video. Uh, this just came in. We, we have exclusive video of his death, which we hate showing on, <laughs> on our show. <laughs> but that. cause of death revealed this morning. And this is sad to see a guy go out this way. A guy who's really built his reputation and his career in, the, in athletics. Um, but, uh, and children, please look away. This is pretty graphic stuff. Let's see how OJ left us yesterday. Do we have video of that? Yeah, that's, uh, it's our duty. Alec, can you pull it up? Hiya, buddy. Hey! Uh, look, you're seeing those old friend. Be on my and it's good as new in a week. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Wait! Like you. <laughs> oh god! Oh man! Oh god! Damn! No way to survive. <laughs> There's no way to survive such a thing. The show was really dead. He seemed like he was already quite. Look at him mid. He's mid air. Uh, he knew it was over right there. It looked like he was already pretty banged up. <laughs> that's, so. that's like your riddle the other day. He's looking at a field. <laughs> yeah. He knew he was a goner. He knew. He <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> Doug, any thoughts on the passing of O.J. Simpson? Uh, I can't say I have any thoughts on that. Um, okay. Uh, we got the virus and it's party time. <laughs> 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 well, I, I, uh, was... I, I do regret not doing a fake ad called O.K. Simpson. <laughs> well, I, my thought was uh, O.J. Simpson died. Uh, who's next? Bart? Uh... Simpson? Yeah. <laughs> what is Homer a better punchline? <laughs> Let, folks, let me do my, remember I used to do a one joke? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, O.J. Simpson, <laughs> accused murderer of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, uh, passed away 
last night with a, after a battle, of, a battle with cancer. Uh, I said, uh, what's next, Bart? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Get the whole big band playing. <laughs> oh, no, I think the the uh, the O.J. Simpson trial of the century, they called it, Matt, uh, riveted us as uh, t I was in. I was a. I remember this. I was 1994. I was graduating. I graduated high school and was home for the summer before going off to Philadelphia for college and. I mean, it's all that you could talk about, right, Matt? You were around back oh, in those yeah. days. Oh, yeah, this is, yeah, I remember. Jeff Apple. And he yeah, was... This was the trial. This was the picture, I think, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> Cuba Gooding Jr. Oh, that's, oh, that was the remake, right. <laughs> Show me the money! <laughs> and it seemed clear and obvious well, that he had he, murdered his wife. Like, well, Tim, the sad the thing is trial. that it got, whoever killed his wife and Rod Goldman are still out there. Maybe not. Maybe not they were justice. killed shortly after by O.J. himself as a, in an act mm -hmm. of revenge. No, we never got to the bottom of that, but uh, I was reading that O.J. had written this book called If I Did It shortly after he got out as a way to make some cash. Um, and I guess, I, don't, I never read the book, but apparently it, was, it seems like a ghoulish book where he kind of imagined a scenario where he, if he had killed his wife and Ron Goldman hear how he, here's how he, he would have done it. Oh, is that really what it's about? I think so. What he yeah. would have done. But, yeah, yeah. but then the Goldman family uh, sued him and, and uh, acquired uh, rights to the book and republished the book. And on the cover, it said, this title still had to remain if I did it, but they made the if tiny, almost impossible to read. <laughs> and so if you looked at it, it just said, I did it. <laughs> wow. But it was, I mean, th there's the great ESPN documentary. And speaking of documentaries, we're going to be speaking with Lance Oppenheim today with his new documentary, Sperm World. It is doc month here on Office Hours as we, <laughs> uh, we clear all the docs off our plate. I'm like, uh, get ready for some all the way. Yeah. I'm getting the feeling of coming at home. Okay. I got the merch. Uh, and I should also add that uh, we have a musical guest, Melinda Sullivan and Larry Goldings, who will be doing a tremendous tap dancing jazz performance that uh, we saw in the sound check and was quite delightful. I think it's going to cheer you up for all those people who are weeping over the passing of OJ. <laughs> but uh, I remember it was uh, then when that, uh, I don't know where you were, Matt. You must have been in high school when the trial, when the, uh, when the verdict was read. Oh, yeah, yeah. Vic was probably in eighth grade. I was probably seventh grade. Seventh yeah, grade. I remember them announcing Doug it. Was, uh, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Doug was studying medicine. Doug was in med school at the time. But I was in Philadelphia at Temple University, which was um, where it was a, it was a l very large African-American. Uh, you were? <laughs> I was a very large African-American. I had some <laughs> corrective surgery. Uh, no, but the population of the school is largely African-American, and I'll never forget being in the cafeteria where the bro live broadcast of the verdict was read, and it was me and my buddy Jared and everybody else African-American, and everybody the place misses, everybody erupted episode, in joy, and it was very w strange. I mean, I had just moved, to, it was only a f few months after I moved there, and it was confusing. Of course, now we can look back and remember that this was coming after the Rodney. I'm looking at you, and I haven't even introduced the guest. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm talking to this and gang here, people watching. And Tim, isn't African American an outdated term? Is it? Isn't it? Isn't it just? It's black with a capital um, B, I think. I don't know that. Well, look no, that. I'm uh, happy I gotta to get, you. Got to get woke. Come on. Wow. Is it Can't really? I don't, yeah, I think I, it is. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that's, that's what I say. Well, look at Vic, when have you been right? I, <laughs> right now. Right but now. I was trying to finish my thought, which is uh, this was in the aftermath of the Rodney King horror, and it felt that there was this feeling of payback and revenge, regardless of whether he had done it. Of course, uh, we are a country of laws, <laughs> and the jury said he didn't do it. So what can you do? Except sue him, which he lost, and then he had to give all his money away. Is that what happened? I think that's what happened. Yeah. On the golf course. Yeah. Then he got arrested again for selling memorabilia or like robbing a back. He stole it back. The guy yeah, was a mess. Yeah. We'll do it live. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I'll let my wife do it. But what works. relief that he's gone, because I was always, I'd have these nightmares of him coming in and <laughs> hacking me to death. So we're safe from OJ. Right, Doug? Um, yeah, we're safe. Uh, I never felt too nervous about that. I don't. I haven't really thought about him in years. To be honest, <laughs> I know. <so. laughs> well, everyone's talking about, it, and the good news is we've gotten to jump on the late night guys. So they're they're gonna they're gonna already, it's already gonna be old news by tonight when Jimmy and Jimmy and Seth and everybody has to assemble some bad jokes about the story. Um, Lance, let's welcome you. Hey, and back up a sec. Let me oh. welcome. <laughs> Stand by. Uh, AJ Doug Pound is with us, of course. Uh, good morning. Let me do something controversial and turn off this system here. Okay. It's trying to make us sweat. We're time for horn. Victor Berger the fourth. Thank you. Good very much. morning, everybody. What sip, everybody? What do you got in there? A little blood, a little no, it's just menstrual water blood. And, from... and I got a, a water enhancer. Do you know what? Ever hear these things? There's <laughs> not. A, there's not a, really a water. I swear to God, they're called water enhancers. They're they come like in a little uh, tub thing, and you squeeze it, and it goes in. And it's great. What does it do? It gives it a little flavor. Okay. No <laughs> water calories. Means... It's better than it's just, just chemicals. It's better. It's a little better than water. It's just chemicals. It's just chemicals. More chemicals. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Captain Carlin is here. Were you here last week? I was not. Ah, that's Wait, right, no, I was. No, you were here I for game not. night. I was here for game, game night. night you were game here. night was I'm available back. only to patrons at patreon.com slash office hours live. Become a part of that community now. This is Captain We Matthew. had a great time. It's worth a rewatch. We talked about the plumbing sewage incident yeah, here. We highlight. talked about so many things. We dove, in, dove into the divorced dad world of oh, Randy Rudy Van, Van Warmer. Warmer. Wow. That well, was great stuff. Well, now I'm addicted to that song. That song is legit great. Um, it's all right. I like it. Uh, yeah. No? I don't go back to it. I don't know. It's in my head. It's stuck in my head. <laughs> it goes like that. <laughs> uh, we'll have a game from Doug later on, which is uh, called Guess the Lyrics Game. I'm excited to find out. Vic's got a new guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And everything else. Oh, I always forget to do this, and I, I shouldn't be responsible for this. That should be producer Matt's job. But we like to provide a recommendation for everybody. So if you want to put that in the back of your head, it can be a movie or a TV show or a podcast or whatever. We like to do that at the end of the show. Mm. Okay? No, no. Okay. <laughs> Lance, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for you. Great grandson of the uh, inventor of the uh, atom bomb, okay. whose family then changed their name to protect their identity from the embarrassment of causing such trouble in this wor modern day world of ours, Lance Oppenheim. Hey, thank you. You Thanks dropped the er. Yeah, that's, well, you, you, you know, you're, you're actually not protecting me from any embarrassment. You're only like, relitigating <laughs> it <Yeah>. for everyone <laughs> to... Experience. I apologize. No, Thank you for doing I, that. I like full transparency on my show. It's interesting. It's uh, the the Oppenheimer movie success. You'd think it'd be good for um, the you know my my uh, your brand my movies. Yeah, but it's actually um, it's been pretty terrible. I you think. could have been in that movie. You know how Benny Safdie was in that movie. I could see you as one of those scientists with your glasses and everything. What, is that the only thing you're trying? To do? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you look Which like a filmmakers, two, two yeah. Jewish guys, Book, guess, bookish yeah. looking, you know, type, <laughs> yeah, very intellectual type. I saw someone, um, uh, there, I was, uh, there was, I was doing an interview and I looked at the comments on this website. Uh oh, and they don't said, ever do uh, that. That is one unfortunate looking guy. Oh, come on. And then there's another comment that said, uh, <laughs> he looks like, like one of those Hollywood guys in the 20s. And so, was, <laughs> well, that's kind of nice. Yeah, Howard Lloyd. Kinda comp complimentary. You do look like Howard Lloyd, wow. especially, with, you know, Howard Lloyd? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harold, yeah. Harold, Harold Lloyd. I said Harold Lloyd. I thought you said Howard Lloyd. Sorry. Oh, okay. Just checking. Simpson. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, last week I got a lot of, speaking of comments, I got a lot of blowback from my audience about this documentary guy, uh, Documentary we talked about last week, which we still highly recommend, The Octopus Murders. Uh, we didn't understand what you're talking about, they said. This is confusing. They're not <laughs> bright. So we just have to dumb this down for them, okay? <laughs> got to talk about it. Very simply, as if we're talking to fourth graders out there in my audience, unfortunately. <laughs> I love morons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you have a new documentary, which is now on Hulu. 
yeah, Dulu, if you want to call it that, Disney Hulu. Dulu. The, Dulu Plus. Hulu. Disney and Hulu. Disney Plus Hulu. Co-produced plus. by the folks that r- reported on the death of O.J. Simpson, the New York Times. Is yes. that correct? Yeah. In collaboration with the New York Times, the failing New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know, yeah. Um, they, they make the video game makers the New York Times. That's like their most profitable. I, l- I play the apparently. connections game every morning, and I play the spelling bee, and sometimes I do Wordle. Mm. I'm very I get up and I sit on the pot because that's what I, you know. I get everything cleared out and mm. play that connections game. <laughs> Where do you do your? Connections you get your sport, game? your sperm out too. While no, you're there? <laughs> interesting. No. Well, uh, let me make this very clear to the audience so there's no confusion. Lance Oppenheim is a documentary <laughs> filmmaker. Okay. Who has What's made a documentary, Tim? I'm getting to that. Can, I'm trying to keep it slow for everybody so they, they're not getting lost. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> so you got the New York Times, uh, the Daily already ready to go. Um, Lan- I'll start again. Lance Oppenheim er, is a documentary filmmaker who's made documentary films such as Some Kind of Heaven. Now I'm getting excited. About the villages in Florida, retirement community. And he's back now with a documentary called Sperm World about the underground world of, well, you explain what this documentary is about. I, (laughs) I don't want to get the terminology wrong. Okay. What is the documentary about? Well, I, you were pretty close. It's uh, it's uh, the uh, kind of DIY unregulated sperm donation universe, which happens a lot on Facebook. So it's about people, strangers that meet on these Facebook groups, women, hey, I'm ovulating, is anyone available? A guy will say, I'm available. And they'll meet up and have sex, or they'll meet up in a parking lot somewhere, and the woman will wait for the man to do his business, and then he'd come, and, you know, literally and figuratively over to her and then he'd uh you know hand over the sperm and then um so the movie kind of explores these these uh these very tenuous relationships and then it kind of becomes something else because you know it's kind of a stop right there let's just oh, let's pause and let if okay. pe- anyone out there are taking notes uh let's bring in a zoomer to see if they're clear about what this documentary is about yeah i, I don't i don't want to get you too how would you rate the explanation i don't want to get too far ahead of it for people Lila, you're a regular. Maybe you're a good uh, example of our audience. Are you there, Lila? Oh, little Lila. I'm not masturbating. (laughs) (laughs) What is one thing the subjects of Lance movies have not said? I wasn't really listening. Can you repeat that? (laughs) Excuse me now? Oh. (laughs) I know. Wrong time. I'm sorry. Okay, well, let's move on. If you're not not paying attention, I don't have no time for you. Goodbye. Sorry. It's okay, you're forgiven. That's us. not a. That's not Lila. That's a different Lila. There is the. Well, yeah, two guess Lilas? what, Doug? We have two Lilas in our audience. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's Jonathan Ashley. Let's, gonna, let's check in with Jonathan Ashley. Ashley. This guy looks like he's paying attention. I'm gonna come on. The hell is this shot? <laughs> well, that's, that's Lila. Lila. Are you doing something with your flowers? Jonathan, say something. Jonathan. Hey, can you guys hear me? There he is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Hey, hey, man. Do you have any questions at this point, or should we move on to get in depth on this documentary? Uh, yes. Um, no, I'm, yeah, I haven't been listening. I'm. I'm oh my God! What is everybody doing? <laughs> but I do have a question. Yes. How do you guys feel about? Well, I guess I don't know if it's politically correct to say anymore, but wife beaters. I'm trying to learn. New shirt. I don't think it's politically correct, but that's A-shirt. okay. We're politically yeah, correct. Yeah, hey, yeah, man. You look great. You look, you look good. What are they that, called? That's A shirt. Why is it called an A shirt? That's a U. I didn't know it's A. It's an A shirt. It's called an A shirt. Sleeveless t shirt. Well, I think you look tough and hor- and I'm horny for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little uh, beater boy. No, you're not. Get out of here. That's, <laughs> how dare you? This is a plague in our country with <laughs> domestic abuse, and you're making light of it. I think you're a shameful person. I'd be a good stand-up comic, though, I guess. I think so. I think that's clear. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. We look forward to seeing you at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> or in jail, where you belong. <laughs> yeah, no, just kidding, man. You, hey, nice. Hey, we if don't we have could, to say If we I'm could be wearing kidding. that shirt, that would be, uh, you know, I think we all be, would be doing it. That's Speaking. a hot weather shirt. Where are you? Wait, what? 
That's a hot weather <laughs> shirt. Where are you? Zooms are canceled for the next year. Wow, you're done. For the, yeah, yeah. He said what? No, zooms are canceled. Well, they're for, they, so. it's because you guys never let them talk. Well, they didn't have. I just, both, you know what we need? Is, have, uh, you we talked, need I asked them a question, and then you talked over. <laughs> we need a mute button for me so that mm-hmm. if the guest yeah, is mean, talking, I'm in Doug. Yes, Doug. I'm in Brooklyn. Is it hot there? He's inside. Uh, There's like, plumbing. Like, There's heating. It's like it's All like right. sixty maybe. Goodbye. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. <sighs> All right, let's get back to. I think everyone's clear. Matt, the ch- how's the chat handling this? Who cares? All this information. No, I. <laughs> Who cares about? Of course, these I don't dummies. care. That's what I'm doing here. I'm goofing on. Who cares about these do nods. Oof. <laughs> My. Uh, they're great. They get it, Who right? Who cares? But Lance Firm World. You know, I, I think the title. Hey, and we got a hat. We got some hats. Well, I was going to talk about know? the hat. hat. Just, I'm uh, stealing your thunder yeah. over here. We got the Sperm World hats. No, was was this yes or no authorized by FX? He's hat. It's uh um no, but it's okay. I think if we wear them, you know, just uh, it can it, it helps. I think when you uh when you're talking about a movie, you gotta yeah. you gotta be referring to something, some visual aids. I think. Now Lance was on our show a couple years ago to talk about some kind of heaven. I think a movie that I was sent through your publicist and just loved, and I've talked about it many times how much I love that movie, and so we became pals and have shared. A lot of things. About You're taking, each other. Your, p- taking the hat off. I took the hat oh, okay, off. Yeah, okay. I don't want to have the hat on anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and one thing that I think is notable about your work is you you enter into very um, intimate, sometimes uncomfortable situations, very vulnerable for the people you're uh, documenting, but you also manage to do it in the most beautifully composed cinematic way that's like your little trick i think that's one of your little signatures how do you approach that with this subject and with the people you're talking to because i can can only imagine that it takes planning and and time to get that right it does this is not a cinema verte film this is like a very composed beautiful piece of work Oh wow! That, thank you. Thanks for saying. Yeah, I just changed and, the mood. Uh, you did. Well, you know. And I, you while know, you talk, we'll look at some of the put some oh, of the nice images over yeah. it. Yeah, it looks like. Is a, it a lot? Is it, is it a lot of stock photography? A lot of. Uh, no, no. Hey, uh, I, what's I, it called? I shot that thing. What's you know how I, I accomplished that image right there. Getty that's images. Salmon Row. <laughs> salmon. Is this AI? That's it's, Salmon it's, Row. That's Salmon Row and wow. milk and uh, and some and I think there's a little bit of oil and a bunch of other a, a bunch of other shit. You know. Um, but even the yeah, shots them, that Alec. are, I mean, that's fine. Audience. Anyone can do that. But I, I noticed that too, Tim. Like the shots of just the couples talking. Yeah. They look incredible. Like it's a super moody like feature. Well, like, hey, not a hey, thank you. And how did? You, yeah. Well, look, I, it goes without saying. I probably wouldn't have been able to get this uh, movie made. You know, you uh, you were such a big uh, supporter oh, of my please. last movie. No, no one's listening. Come to on, you. come on. There's yeah. no evidence of that. I actually do think uh, there was there was something that happened last time I came on the podcast. It felt the like needle uh, moved. It felt like it went like, you know. Folks, the needle moved. Thanks so to whatever, the office hey, hours community, the community. We moved the needle. I, I should have put uh, you guys in the special thanks. I think you actually are in the special thanks because you gave me some notes on this movie of Sperm World. You. Yeah, you said. Yeah, what were my notes? You were saying, you know, hey man, you know, it's it's uh, um, you know, maybe you could use a little bit more context for the the dummies out there. <laughs> but uh, good notes. Go yeah, you know, I didn't. I'm always I didn't thinking take about it, my audience. So I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, no, but I, I, look, it's, it's it's a fine balance because yeah. you you want you want to keep things mysterious, but you also don't want to like have people tune out because they don't know what's happening That's yeah so good. well the, the thing with this movie was it was like how do you just move how do you place an audience in you know right there with these people who are making these decisions that are for some people very spontaneous for other people really planned out but inevitably when you're in a room with a stranger and they're about to you know give you their semen and you don't know them and it's a huge maybe life-altering decision yeah you know how how do you how do you go about that, right? Yeah. And so all of these conversations are incredibly uncomfortable and awkward, and sometimes really funny, and now, sometimes very, uh, you know, tender. But uh, I, I mean, the you know the, the way we get most of these images and everything, it requires a lot of trust and time. You know, it's like three and a half years we spent making this movie, and yeah. then, 
and the, on the part of all the people that are in it, the, the, you know, the participants, the subjects, they, um, when I come to each of them, I'm sort of, I, I tell them what I'm interested in. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in your story because, you know, you have 170 children and you don't have a <laughs> house. <laughs> that, have, let, uh, let's talk about that for a second because yeah. out of context, that's strange. There, there's one of the guys that you follow. Uh, what's his name in the movie? Uh, Ari Nagel. Ari Nagel. This guy is a prolific uh, sperm donor. And he's a little bit of a, I think he's a, um, he's not, he's atypical of most of the other people in the movie because there seems to be this, I don't know what you'd want to call it, but a obsession or a deep. He's almost like addicted to it. I'm coming day and night. Now, maybe you don't want to say that. <laughs> no, I mean, hey, you, you, you can, you can, I think, um, I mean, that, that's sort of what the movie ends up becoming about. It's sort of, you know, it's, it's about kind of, Longing and loneliness, but it's also about these the, the motivations of these people on both sides, the, the men and the women. What brings them here? Yeah. For someone like Ari, it's not. I don't think uh, he desires to be like a Genghis Khan type of guy. He's he he donates his sperm for free yeah. to anyone who asks. And but he ends up having relationships with yes. all these kids. Now a lot of people, the norm would be that you are kind of giving this away, and it's because people want. They can't conceive and they want their family, but they ne don't necessarily want a sperm donor involved. Yes. But this is, not what the, this is not the case with Ari. Yeah, I mean, with him, he wants to be, uh, you know, he, he has so many children now, but he sees himself really as their father, you know, so he'll show up at someone's house and he'll spend, you know, a night with them and it's, you know, he gives, he gives it his all and then no. he'll disappear for four years. And then he'll, you know, because he's with, no. he's with another child and another child and another child. I thought it was interesting, the women in that situation, they're largely single women? Some of them, yeah. And they're just interested in we having some hands kids. In the now, back. Vic hasn't seen the movie. I haven't seen the movie, but Doug wants to ask a question. That's great. <laughs> uh, some of these guys are, I was thinking sperm donors, they all need to be looking like... Dolph Lundgren or something. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, one guy's like in his 60s, and it seems like any Tom, Dick, or Harry can give their sperm. So yeah. So, do I have a shot at being a sperm donor on Facebook? You'd be a very popular man. I would especially be. with your crowd, your audience, your comedy. <laughs> You're virile. The work you've made, you know. No, I think, I mean, that's the one thing that's sort of interesting about this is that sperm banks are really, they're extremely expensive and cost prohibitive for a lot of people, right? And so, I, the cost, I think, is one of the main reasons. I'm gonna get on this Facebook is, tonight. Yeah, you could literally. So that's why these these Facebook groups started popping up. There's uh, people, you know, who yeah. tried to go sort of the, through the traditional routes and it didn't work, and so they looked up sperm donation. It used to be on Craigslist, but Craigslist banned it. Yeah. Facebook hasn't banned it, and there's these massive groups of people, you know, that are flocking and. Um, meeting one another. And it's from, almost like yeah. turn into like Yelp or something too. Like there's people rating it or talk like <laughs> arguing about who's right, right? Like there's well, like, yeah, there's, he there's was great, comments, like recommending people Recommendations. Recommendations. Now, Sometimes Doug's, if one I guy's thought, not available, they'll tag another person, you know. I thought Doug was going one way with what he was about to say, but my thought was, yeah, you do question like if it's an older guy or maybe a guy with, you know, whatever condition or something, like the old story about David Crosby Donating sperm for Melissa Etheridge always seemed weird to me because of genetics. And mm. David Crosby was like a known addict and weight issues. And like, it's like, you'd think there'd be a very, if you have that choice of who your donor is going to be, you'd think like genetics would enter into it. But, and now they say like older men's sperm increases the risk of certain. Genetic conditions. I mean, that's not all right? genetic, though. I think it's like a lot of. I didn't say it was all. No, I know, I know, I know. But he, like his upbringing was probably pretty rough. That's true. David what? Crosby. Well, yeah. it's interesting. It's like it's actually it's hard to scientific. I mean, I think there's a lot of stuff floating around there. But I think um, Steve, the guy, the 65 year old in the movie, he's had like seven children now, and all all are very healthy. Okay. Um, so so you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> well, what is what really what do you think Ari is getting out of having that many kids? Like, what is is it just the community wrong? or what? what you is, watch the doc. You gotta right? watch no, I know, the doc. Well, like, I don't know if that gets that gets I fully answered. An, either. I, yeah, I, I think was think like, what do you think is going on there? Well, clearly he's because that's not normal. Yeah, right. It gets into that like his mom is Guinness Book of World Records. Maybe? He, he ditches his mom to like go visit it. Right. 
Well, I think there's something, I you know, I, I think there's a, like a dimension to all of these people that are, you know, when we meet them in the movie and where they are in their lives, they're, they're sort of, they're trying to figure out why they matter and yeah. what, you know, it's a, what purpose do they serve in other people's lives? I think Ari has just, he, the, the amount of love and, and joy he, you know, he receives from masturbating because he goes. <laughs> right. It's, it's not, not a bad way to kill the time. <laughs> There's no like post, you know, the, the post nut clarity thing, if that's what it is, when you, you, you know, you <laughs> masturbate and you feel terrible about yourself afterwards. <laughs> right, right. This is completely removed for him. Every time he masturbates, someone is, is congratulating uh -huh. him and thanking him profusely, right? right? right. And so it's this, um, I think, it's not just about making people happy. I do think he loves, he really does see himself as a father but because of that, you start to see in the movie, it's like this gargantuan, this like Sisyphean task where he has to, it's like, how could you possibly be a father to 170 children? <laughs> I mean, and I think part of it goes back to his mother and the way, you know, it's, it's, he's seeking validation. Right. In his, a way. Mother's exactly. a yeah, yeah. his mother's a trip. I have a, a very similar relation. I love my mother. We're very mm -hmm. close, but it's a, it's a very similar thing. It's a, you know, I can't tell if it's a thing common with Jewish mothers or who knows, but my mom, you know, the way she expresses her love for me is extreme judgment and, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, <laughs> concern, worries, yeah. you know. Um, um, yeah. Uh, I do need to do the city of the day, keep us on track. We're going to keep talking about this movie. And Son of a bitch. I masturbate a lot. Oh, my last question real quick is, do you think that Ari is in danger of uh, damaging the human gene pool with the, all these kids out there that there's going to be mutations and incest happening. That could, it has to that happen. Could, it, it could happen. It has to it, be a concern. It, it absolutely could happen. Most, you know, I mean, there, he has like a, a mom groups, you know, groups for his mothers and he has all of his kids on a spreadsheet so he can keep track of where they are. Um, they're it's on a, a list. You know. and, and, and how does he lit? What's his... He earns. He teaches math at a community college oh, in Brighton that Beach. Keep, that keep, <laughs> but he doesn't. Happening. I mean, this is the thing you sort of learn over the course. I of I guess the movie. it's a it's a college, so it's not underage. He's or... tenured, you know. But uh, he he um, he has paid so many you know so much child support that he doesn't have a physical residence anymore. He can't afford it. So every night. Oh well. Kind of you know. That's real quick. A question like: do, do these guys have to pay child support? Or like, le what's the legal legality on that kind of thing? Well, I mean, sometimes if, if uh, I mean, really, in terms of the legality, most of these interactions, there's no contract signed, signed and there's no genetic papers really given either. So it's, right. um, it's, it's open. So I think uh, some people he feels have taken advantage of him by suing him for child support. Oh, well, can though, you imagine yeah. being in that mess? <laughs> yeah. I hope I'm never in any kind of mess like that where I'm getting sued. <laughs> you know? Just wait until tonight, man, after this. Well, you better be nice to us or you won't be in that mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, are you threatening me with a lawsuit? <laughs> no. I'd I'm love to see that. Could oh, I'm going to do the penis thing. <laughs> All right. Today's... The city of the day. You son of a bitch. The city of the day. I got a target on my back now. That's great. Just what I needed, a target on my back. I'm going to go to... Uh... OJ's lawyers. I'm gonna get those. I'm gonna get those. <laughs> I think they're all dead. <laughs> oh, are they? I think they're all dead. There's Johnny, one guy. Johnny, There's Johnny one Cochran's dead. F. Lee Bailey's dead, and of course, uh, Kardashian's gone. What about Ido? There's, he's a, not a, there's he's a private a, investigator. <laughs> I've spoken to him who worked and got OJ. You know, I guess he found those uh, audio clips that the police officers, when they were saying, calling him the the N word, oh, stuff, sure. and being yeah. racist towards OJ. He 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 was able to. This guy is like the. You ever see Devil's Advocate? The he's movie. kind of that guy. He's yeah. been. He's worked. Uh, he worked with um, Casey Anthony. He worked with all. You know. Right. But he's sort of just a gruff. He lives. He lives in Florida. Anyway, right. we'll look, just, we'll just look, throwing that out there. Just, yeah. just a little piece of. We'll information. look out. We'll look out for him next time I'm down there. Uh, <laughs> the city of the day is sponsored by Golf Hungren. <laughs> Playing golf is a wonderful pastime, and it's a great way to kiss some rich dude's ass. But a game takes forever, and who doesn't get hungry during a round of 18 holes? While, well, why neglect the most important hole, your mouth? Luckily, Dolph Lundgren invented Golf Hungren. These uh, edible flavor-coated Swedish meatballs look exactly like golf balls, so you can snag a bite when no one is looking. You, you wouldn't want to bring a big sloppy sandwich or a greasy pizza to the green. That would look unprofessional and your colleagues would be pissed off if you didn't share. These are easy to pop in your mouth when no one's looking. And don't worry, Golf Hungren balls come in several other delicious Swedish flavors such as pickled herring, graved salmon, and lingonberry pancakes for dessert. 
Each golf hungrin serving comes in a pack of, Doug? Four. Just enough to satisfy your appetite and keep you on the green. Office Hours fans get a free club of moose jerky that looks exactly like a driver for those extra long games. Go to Dolph.Golf and use the code MOUTH at checkout or visit any participating IKEA. Hey, there's a jingle. I'll enjoy it now. When I'm golfing, I feel like a munchie man. So I grab some balls of golf hungry. <laughs> All right. Incredible. And just a side note, we... Uh, <laughs> We got we had a flag on the play with this ad because uh -oh. our artist oh, that's right. that's our artist right. Um, Dan, uh, Dan uh, flagged and told Doug he said D Adolf Lundgren is, uh, is has cancer and is <laughs> not appropriate. And then we looked into it and yeah, if you man's Google cancer Dol free. If you Google Dolph Lundgren, it's, it doesn't even show up. It's like Paige, you know, yeah, he like, beat it a year ago. <laughs> old news. Yeah, so we felt we felt. Our conscience was clear to proceed with the goof on Dolph Lundgren. Was Dolph Lundgren Swedish? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Oh. But so what about Ivan Drago? Well, now he's... Ivan Drago is from the USSR. I don't know. Right. But the actor no, is... Drago old. is... Yeah, Drago. Yeah, Drago. Yeah. He was playing a uh, Russian. His range. I will break you. I will break you. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's I'll start in adding that to my impressions repertoire. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren. I will break you. You're not so big. <laughs> now, who won that boxing match? See, but the thing with these boxing movies is like Rocky loses. Well, no, he won eventually that. at the end. I'm not going to spoil it. I that. He's the people's he hero. He killed man. Apollo Creed, goddammit, <laughs> with his fist. He, he, he was the, what, what they did was the USSR used all the technology in the world, all these machines. He's on the treadmill. He's using computers to create a superhuman. This guy was stronger than anybody they've ever seen. And then he shows up to box Apollo Creed and punches him so hard that he's killed. The actor was survived, it was a stunt, of course, but Apollo himself, the character, was killed on the fucking ring, Duh, dead. <laughs> What does is, what is Rocky do? Not forgiveness. Oh, no, 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 There's no forgiveness in Rocky's heart after something like that happens. He goes to Russia for revenge. He says, no, I'm gonna beat, I'm gonna fucking fight him. If I die, then so be it. Now, he, Rock don't have access to the computers and the treadmills, so he brings Pauly out and they work out with logs and running through the snow and picking up big boulders and throwing it. That's how rock trains. That's how CrossFit started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lifting up a big tree. Ah! Paulie's running behind him on a dog sled. And guess what? It was just enough to knock that son of a bitch Ruski down. Oh. And he didn't die, but he got bruised badly. <laughs> Who's the city of the day, Matt? Brandon. Brandon. Oh, hop in. Hello. Um, the city of the day is, um, I'm going to plug my hometown and not the place I actually live, um, which is North Richland Hills, Texas. Great. Did you catch any of that stupid eclipse? Um, well, he's no, not because there. I'm in New York City. <laughs> well, they do, they, you can see it in New York City, too. Don't yeah, it was... You. It was much cooler um, there. My parents had a pretty good time with it, but here it was, it was all right. You know, the earthquake was cooler, in my opinion. Oh, that's oh yeah, right. I heard about that earthquake. Yeah, earthquake. earthquake. Which part yeah. of Texas is that? Where is that in Texas? Uh, it's like thirty minutes from um, Fort Worth and forty minutes from Dallas. It's like right in the middle, like next to the airport. That's beautiful country. What is that Fort Worth? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have no no love for uh, most of Texas. In, really? In terms of the... It, well, West Texas is, of course, quite beautiful with the sort of New Mexico, uh, beautiful big sky, and right? But that... that I've never been. Oh. It's too big. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that whole Dallas and uh, that whole part of Texas, eek, it's an ugly country. Ugly. Sorry, I, folks. I appreciate that. That's nice. Yeah, just, you know... Alienating another supporter of your work. <laughs> You're going to live, right? You're going to live? Uh, it's fine, yeah. yeah. I can show you around my hometown. Yeah, maybe it's turned. Maybe of, they've uh, planted trees parties. or something. What are they, what's your main uh, economy thing there? 
Oh yeah, what's your main economy thing there? <laughs> Arby's the or what do you guys do? Oh, Oil? It's probably fucking Arby's. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, it's it's just like suburbia, you know. Like it's it's. I don't think there's any actual economy there. It's just <laughs> the people that live there then go to Fort Worth or Dallas or wherever. Have okay. you been to the Texas Renaissance Festival? Ooh. No, I nice, nice, nice uh, segue. <laughs> so uh, Lance, yeah, yeah. Lance does not Ren Lance. Fair, right? Ren Fair, yeah. Thanks, pal. Yeah. We wish you all the best, and uh, maybe I'll see you in New York when I host Wait. SNL next weekend. So good. Can I Trojan horse a question? Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, Lance. I watched Sperm World last night. Um, that was really interesting, to say the least. I, don't, um, I mean, I don't like that. Well, I don't like the way. What was your letterbox score? Was it? Was well, it I well, I mean, it's a five. Wow. Well, okay. There we honestly. go. Hey, thank you like, for watching. That's very nice. No, because nice honestly, I was like, I was watching it, and I was like, you know, I think would think what everyone else is thinking is like, this is like so well put together. Um, it looks really nice, and I, like this, the thing that Tim was talking about last week, like, I hate when these documentaries are like, you know, it's the person like sitting down. And they're like, <laughs> really good. The clapper and the micro, the boom mic. Yeah, 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 yeah it's, okay. it pisses me off. Um, it's like what I was saying about during that Nickelodeon documentary. And like this one just puts everything in such a nice narrative and it's more human feeling. Um, but anyways, my question was the first guy in the movie, um, I think his name is Kyle or something, right? Yes. Uh, you, you don't do anything on that guy. Was he just that uninteresting? The pounding. <laughs> it, it, it's it's kind of a mixture of of things, but I I think we uh, there was an earlier version of the movie where I was much more interested in sort of the like uh, the, the the political machinations of how these groups are moderated and stuff because it's a bunch of these guys like Kyle who um yeah who are policing uh, certain kinds of behavior and letting in things that are uh, not good. And anyway, for me, I just was sort of like the, the only thing I had shot with him that, that really seemed to be of interest was that scene. And it kind of, for me, the, the movie, to start the movie off really kind of in a, in a shocking way, you know, putting yeah. two people in a motel room and they're about to have sex with each other, but they've never met each other. And he's asking if she can do a handstand. And she's like, <laughs> what is it? What did... <laughs> what is that? What is a handstand? Yeah, it's like, I, well, when I finish inside you, you just, so the sperm stays inside you, then you have to orgasm. Can you do that? Can you can you do it? And she's just like, what What are you talking about? Yeah. I'm a human being. I'm here. And she's like, hi, can we talk for a minute? Can we talk? Yeah. <laughs> so for me, it was sort of like I wanted to do something that, you know, I feel like no other person in the movie gets pregnant. That wasn't by design. That was just sort of, you know, documentary. You know, you, you don't know where things are going to go. But I kind of felt like when someone did get pregnant, I always thought that's when the story should end and on both sides. Yeah. So you can capture at least like the thing that we were trying to do is capture sort of the like the, the awkwardness and the tension and the absurdity of that sort of, you know, the, the, the encounter and then kind of let it open up and blossom into this really, you know, beautiful kind of like reverie of dream, dream babies. You see someone accomplish the dream they set out to do, um, the recipient Anika, and so it kind of gives the movie this sense of like, it, it, you know, um, the promise of sperm world that if you just sit through enough of these awkward encounters and endure that kind of conversation or put yourself in what she calls like a horrendous yeah, one night stand. Yeah, she said it was like a really you know? bad date. And yeah. Like, she's glad it's over. And, and then, if everything goes well, still, you have some kid who won't clean the room and talks back to you yeah. and treats you like shit. <laughs> That's some good it's some, you know, For her, at least, it, like uh, the, the experience was negated by the fact that she has this beautiful child. Now, Lance, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, so she decided to actually have intercourse with the guy instead of just getting the test tube or the, the cup of sperm why would someone choose to do the nasty instead of just it's a beautiful thing to the cup. well sometimes i mean it's 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 like there's a ni which is called natural insemination which is sex ai which is artificial insemination which is like the the dude jizzes in a cup and then that's mm -hmm. what's you know and there's like other things pi partial insemination where it's like a guy gets himself to a point where he's going to climax and, then and he inserts, inserts yeah. which is you know very i feel like uh uh, confusing for, yeah. the, for both parties. Is, is there evidence, is there scientific evidence that one is more effective than the other, or is it just... I think most people 
would say that natural insemination is is probably the most effective. But you know, there's plenty yeah. of people in the groups that are also getting pregnant all the yeah. time via artificial insemination. But anyway, look, to answer your question, I, there was like, a, I also just, when I make these movies, I really have to, I feel like connect with the person and we have to trust each other and, uh, and you know, yeah, be, be, be together for a long period of time. And I don't think I really felt that with him. And I don't yeah. think he really felt that with me. I, I, mean, I just couldn't from, make something that was uh, empathetic, I feel like, with, with him in the film. Yeah, it was it's a great uh, entry and a little mysterious and a little, uh, what, I'm a little out of my is element here. And, ooh, I want to find out more. All right. Uh, one other real quick uh, question. <laughs> uh, so it opens up and you got the camera in there and this couple... Comes in, they're about to do the nasty, and then like you keep saying the you nasty. Take, you it's take the whole, you take the whole camera crew out of there, or did you keep rolling? Oh, you got some uh, good oh, yeah. footage you can yeah, show you us. Got some footage, can I see that? Those outtakes or what? <laughs> no, yeah, we we uh, it was sort of a thing where it was like, um, okay, this is how it's gonna go down. I'm gonna put the camera here. You guys are gonna talk to each other. I don't, you know, in, in, until the moment when you're ready for us to leave. Let us know, and we'll 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 leave the room. Yes, but um, roll, keep rolling. And if you <laughs> notice, it's like the one time in the movie someone like looks back towards the camera because I think Kyle is just so anxious to get going. Like he doesn't want to talk to her. He doesn't want to. <laughs> so horny. He, he doesn't want anything. You know, he he just yeah. wants to get to down to business. So he's like kind of looking at us, like, "Come on, let's go." And she's just like, "Hold on a second, I'm not yeah, ready yet." Yeah. Well, you know? listen. Let's let everybody experience that. Watch Sperm World. The pounding on FX. Or Hulu, it's on Hulu. Yeah, and Disney Plus. Dis it's, it's, it's not Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Yeah, I hope my kids. Now it's on Disney uh, Plus. <laughs> Disney Plus. <yeah. laughs> you don't mind if I just grab that? No, I'm, I'm nervous a little bit. You know, it's like uh, I keep I, seeing on Twitter. I, I look it up. You know, at, when I, at night, see hey, who, what's, what people saying about the movie, and I see a bunch of people who are saying, you know. But at, at Bob Iger, how right. dare you put this? Oh on yes, the I mean you'll you you'll get the bitch, Tim Pool you know? audience and the and the Vinny. Uh, by the way, Vinny's gonna come after you. All these creeps are gonna go. Vincent after. Chase? No, Vinny. Vinny oh, okay, Vinny. Uh, what's, <laughs> his what's his name? last name? I don't even know. Adrian Grenet. No, this, you're talking about Entra. I'm not talking about Entra. I'm talking about PBD. PBD. I sent the movie to Agent Grenet. I found his email on the internet just to see what he said. I found his email on I the internet. I uh, haven't heard back from him yet. He's been so. pretty quiet. Maybe he's working on that he Aquaman movie. He lives in Texas. Movie. Yeah, A2. Yeah. That's what they call it. A3, maybe. Um, yes. Let me take a breath here. <laughs> uh, let's take a hotliner. And then, yes. Matt, I think we're ready. Close? Getting close to our musical guest? Yes. Yeah, maybe we should let them get... Well, let's take a hotliner and then yeah, yeah. bring him in. Okay, uh, Chris in Chicago with a bone to pick. Oh, Chris, oh. you're on the air. Um, hi, I have a bone to pick with Tim. Yes, sir. You may look. Can I guess it? Uh, I just yes. Please try to guess. This is impression of you. It's like uh, oh, I don't understand anything that guy was saying about his movie. Was it? <laughs> A superhero movie or <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I actually thought that movie sounded very interesting. My bone to pick is uh, I, I'm calling on behalf of the bald community. Ugh. And I, bald people. I wanted to say that balls. I think you owe our community an apology. Uh, For what? What have I I've disparaged I can, the bald community? If this is something you that happened on the show like four weeks ago, you're going to have to remind us. Well, yes, it's well, it's well noted that I have no time or patience for the bald-headed man. I think there's plenty of great options there. There's hats, there's <laughs> medical procedures, there's toupees, which are looking so good that uh, they've gotten really good at toupees now. So I th nobody wants to see that much skin on a man's head. You gotta cover it up somehow. We're a hat. How's your you can toe? get a sperm world hat. There well, you go. Yeah. Receiving an uh, apology. What's that? So is that a denial on the apology? I'll never apologize for and my con the convictions of my beliefs. I'm sorry. And I'm well, so sorry. Well, we will deliberate and... I am prejudiced against bald men. <laughs> I am prejudiced. <laughs> Vic, you be careful with what's going on up there. I know. I don't want to see any, I don't want to see you lose one extra hair up there. I'll be very upset. I glue this hat to my head. All right, bone picked, Chris. Thanks.
Choke, go choke indeed. on it. Disappointing. That's a good answer for it. Very I got a bone to pick. Oh yeah, go pick it and choke on it, like a dog. Well, I'm choking. Very disappointing. <laughs> All right, take care. I want to put some balding pills in Tim's coffee. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Or a balding pill. Yeah, balding pills. Real? I don't know. But like balding, chemotherapy? Yeah, yeah, Actually, yeah. I think, <laughs> I, think I made a fake ad for some kind of balding product. Some kind of balding Remember that? product. Matt? Some kind yeah. of sequel. <laughs> I'm sure like, yeah. How about that? <laughs> what? I said some kind of balding product could be a sequel to my first film, Some Kind <laughs> some of Heaven. Kind of, still have issues by with the that way, title, by the way. Yeah, I, well, hey, you're not the only one because everyone's always like, uh, that movie, Just Like Heaven, that the, movie, the Heaven Knows. I don't know. It's some doesn't kind of. Stuck, it doesn't some, stick some, in like, your head. Some, some kind of wonderful. Hey, there's yeah. a. Can I, uh, can I give a shout out? I don't know if he's here. My editor on Renfair. Nicholas Nazmi was See, a, now you've confused everybody. What the uh -oh. Ren Fair oh, fuck. is another documentary that is coming to HBO soon. When? This summer. This summer. Early summer. You think now, it, can I come back and we could talk about it? We'll see. We'll see what the, the comments say the, at, oh. on this episode. The <laughs> rate, rate, rankings, the, the ratings, ratings are so up. Many views. Yes, of course. We'll promote anything you work you make, unless this is some kind of disaster. But Eric Natornicola <laughs> saw it and said it was uh, your best work. Wow. He hadn't seen Sperm World though, so okay. why are we listening to him? Yeah, he's got he's got some work to catch up on. Yeah. No, no, yeah. I made another project. I made these two movies back to back, Sperm World and Ren Fair, for the last like three and a half years. I hate the Ren Fair. Yeah, well it hates you, man. I can't tell I, how, how many people just are making fun of you there. It's, it's all about you. I don't I went to, I don't like Ren you can use this drop, guys. I don't like Ren Fairs. <laughs> well, this is a. I think you'll enjoy this movie. I'm sure I it's will. It's a show, it really. But you know, it's a. It's about. It's basically like a. It's a succession crisis that's happening at the America's oh, largest yes. Renaissance. That's festival. a good pitch to get yourself some funding. There we go, and I, I did it. Yeah. The Safties, the Josh mm -hmm. and Benny and Ronnie, who's not a Safty, but Ronald yeah. Bronstein, the the man. Now, are you able to get those guys on the phone anymore? Or what what happened there? I, you like... know, some yeah, sometimes. You know, <laughs> Ronald Bronstein is the yeah. is the uh, he's he's. If anyone hasn't seen Frownland, that's a good great movie. He made that one. Anyway, we all worked on this thing together. It's going to come out soon. It's it's about a man named King George Coulomb who's created his a real life fiefdom. He has a town around the Renaissance Festival. He's the mayor of the city. And now he's 87, and he just wants to find a companion. He doesn't. He wants right. to find someone to have sex and this, you know, you and this be, sex. be be in love. <laughs> and he doesn't want to do the fair drugs. anymore. And his uh, proclivities towards uh, his you know romantic life has been sort of complicated for the business. And so mm. there's three people that mm. want to take over: uh, an actor, an elephant trainer, former elephant trainer. And a kettle corn guy, a kingpin. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, that sounds great. There's a guy. I don't know if you know Jeff Baina, who you were in yes, the movie. Yes, of course. The kettle corn kingpin looks identical to Jeff Baina. And actually, at one point, I said to Jeff, "I think you may. I, can you come down here? Because if this guy doesn't For want to be part of it yeah. anymore, we can. I forget what the term is, but we could shoot you. Oh you know, yeah. The back of your head for him. All right, well, so that's coming this summer. But um, Nick Nazmi, my editor, he's a, a proud listener of this show. He actually contributed to one of your pun contests. Oh, yes. A while back. Yes, And yes. Um, anyway, I don't well, know. Well, no he's puns here. today, folks. Please, we're, sw we're swimming in them. Yeah. Um, so I hate to interrupt, but we do want to bring our guests in, but they need a minute to sit. Yeah, so let's so take can... a couple hotlines. Tim, yeah. let, me, let me just clear throw the in real quick that the product I had was called Spalding Gray's Balding Spray. And we need Thank Lance you. to come move over to this uh -oh. stool. Uh oh. Remember? We gotta do uh, some fondly. So guys, come on in. <laughs> Leave it on Tim's shot, please. And and just to just if any how are the technicals today? Because uh I want to shout out that Alec has now moved from producer Matt's chair to Wes's yes. chair because Wes is off in Europe. Alec, pull up Tim's shot please. Just leave it on Tim's shot. Thank you, Alec. There you go. Okay, now you can come in, and we're going to take some hotliners while we do a reset. That's one uh, smart Alec. Tom in Bucks County, you are <laughs> on the air. <laughs> Tom in Bucks County. Hey, Tim. No. Um, quick recommendation, nice. Strand. No. That's a good one for uh, on connections on Wordle. But um, huh? I was wondering Wait. if you'd let me uh, blow some... Can you guys hear me? You yeah, said we something can. Up, you said something we didn't understand what you meant. Strand? Oh, you're talking about Wordle and connections, and strands is a sort of new game that I think you would enjoy. Okay, would, good. That we'll make a note of that. Point. Strand. Now, um, what, would, what did you want to call about? Talk about? <laughs> um, no, I, I actually wanted to rant a little, or you know, get something off my chest because 
Um, you, you mentioned uh, Temple University earlier, and this week was the uh, college basketball font, you know, the, the big championship game. Yeah. And Dawn Stale, that's where she originated. She was the world champ or the women's champion. And some douchebag reporter tried goading her about trans people. Yes, I saw and that. It's just going, it, 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 uh, I got to get texts from like people who are supposedly well meaning about. Oh, I care about women's sports now, even though they make up like point zero 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 one percent. And all all Don Staley's uh, of women athletes, all Don Staley said was, "Yeah, that of course they can play because of course they're fucking women. Trans women are women." Yes. And it's really just blowing my mind how many people, both personally, prof- you know, professionally, politically, just are obsessed and have this creepy obsession with trans people. And none of them have ever, ever, any, have ever had any interaction with them. Right. I have actually gone on a date with a trans person. It didn't work out, but I was just like, eh, that was it. I, I'm not gay now. Like, it, they're, they're fucking people. They're women. Amen to and, you. And you sound passionate. It, it, it just, and, yeah. Good for I, I, you. I don't preach to the choir, but it, it just, well, all right, thanks, man. No, let, look oh, at no, that. No. That's a beautiful call. I mean, that's a beautiful person out there who has empathy and you can look beyond just your little tiny world to see that there are other people out there that are not just like you. And that's the problem and with the that women's report. game, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I'm so sorry to interrupt. But the, the women's basketball game was way more entertaining than the men's one. And I've, I've never really watched women's sports. I just watched because it was good. And it was a great game. And, and just let them just, just shut the fuck up. Let these people do what they do, yes. and let them live their fucking lives. They have the highest suicide rate. Yes. For Christ's sake, they're people. They're well, apparently the guy that, and Sam Cedar's yeah. show covered this, by the way, and I thought they did, they, they highlighted it very uh, succinctly. Sam Cedar sounds like a sperm donor. Easy. <laughs> but uh, this is the whole thing with that reporter. He's this right-wing lunatic who works for some right-wing sports organization. And he asked the question, it's all about this framing, they frame it. Oh, There's a lot of conversation about, uh, you know, trans women in sports. <laughs> Only from you. Only by you nut bags. No one fucking cares or thinks about it. It's not really a significant in any way a portion of the, you know, the population that, that plays sports in college. It's like. It's not a thing that you need to think about or worry about. So all you're doing is wedging an issue to make, uh, to get people to look at your g- garbage, right? And, and, they just, and they don't even care about women's sports. No, they of course not. Sports. They don't, they, all they care about is their numbers and their... It's just, of course, yeah. Listen, we need to change yeah. the mood. What's your name again, pal? But thank you for letting me play. Excuse me, what's your name? I'm Tom. Tom, you're the greatest. You know that? T-O-M, Tom. Yeah, Tom. Tom? I'm sorry? Tom. P O M. Tom. Tom. T O M. P O M. I get the name. I know. And that was Tom. Z O M. Tom. I just want to say I, I love you and I value your, your passion and your moral sense, your ethical uh, compass is, is right on the money. And God bless you Thank and you continue to you. incur and be a, be a light of uh, enlightenment to the, the community around you. A, B, C, D, Yes. Thanks, Tom, Tom, we love you. Take care, buddy. Take care. All right. Is, wow. is he okay? He's okay. Right? I love Tom. Tom, all the best. We're going to change the mood. Oh, literally changing the mood because we are about to see something truly special. Hold on. Wait. That's way too dark. What happened? Oh, I have... How's that? I can't see shit. Alec, is that working for you? <laughs> <laughs> We're creating a, a, a haunted house back here. No silence allowed. Um, <laughs> we are joined well, in why. studio by Larry Goldings and Melinda Sullivan, who are going to do an absolutely charming jazz and tap dance performance. And then we'll, just so you guys know, we're going to take a little break afterwards. Gonna talk to you. Lance has got a phone call to get yelled at by some network executives <laughs> for making hats, <laughs> which I think should be legal. I think that's your First Amendment, right? Yeah. And then we'll come back and talk to you guys, and and then we'll get a maybe get another another tune performance from them later. Without further ado, Melinda Sullivan and Larry Goldings.
right. We'll be back in a few. He's all got the full show, yeah. Come on, already. Go get the full show at www.patreon.com slash office hours live. Patreon.com slash office hours live. Get the full show. Get the full show. Get the full show. Go, 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 get the full show. At patreon.com slash office hours live. Hurry up and type into any web browser patreon.com slash office hours live. Go ahead and get the full show. Become a patron. Have fun. Have laughs. Have the full show. A yeehaw to all of y'all.